when you listen to the Dhamma, the Buddha recommends that you do two things. One is that you apply appropriate attention, and the other is that you practice the Dharma in line with the Dharma. Appropriate attention means asking yourself, how does this Dharma relate to my problem of suffering? Does it help me understand the suffering? Does it help me let go of the cause? Does it help me as I try to develop the path? Always try to apply it directly to what you're doing right now. If it's not relevant to what you're doing right now, we'll just stay with your meditation. Any part that is relevant will then just come in on its own. You don't have to send your mind out to the talk. As for practicing the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma, that means practicing for the sake of dispassion. You ask, how does this Dharma help me get dispassionate toward the things that I'm really passionate about? And passion here doesn't mean necessarily sexual passion. It can mean anything, anything in the world that your mind really gets obsessed about, that you're really addicted to. Because when you look at it, the Buddha's analysis of our, of our clinging, which he says is suffering, basically comes down to a kind of addiction. The mind doesn't have a hand that it uses to cling to things, but it keeps going back to certain patterns of behavior and doing them over and over again without much reflection on where they lead, whether they really do get good results. And so you want to see if you can get some dispassion for your old habits. The habits that are actually causing suffering. And you want to be able to see them clearly. Yeah, this is making me suffer. And I don't really have to do it. And part of you will say, well, this is just the way I am. Well, the way you are has been constantly changing. Think of how many lifetimes you've been through. You've been many, many different things. And certain personality traits may last for several lifetimes, but then they just fade away. It's replaced by something else. And so you can always change. Every effort that's made in the right direction is effort well spent. And you can learn how to step back from the things that you're passionate about and really see that they're just an addiction. They're not really doing anything for you. They're creating more trouble than, they, than they're worth. And when you see that, they're more trouble than they're worth. And you realize that you have an alternative. The mind will let go. We hear so much about thinking in terms of inconstancy, stress, and not self. Those are the main outlines of what leads your thinking in the direction of letting go. But for particular defilements or particular perceptions where you say, oh, this isn't worth it, this is stupid, I'm causing myself trouble for not getting anything out of it. You don't have to think about inconstancy or stress or not self. It's just, it's not worth it. You let it go. So how does this Dharma talk help you let go of those things? Those are the questions you should ask. And then you should continue with your practice for the sake of learning how to see through your clingings and realize they're not worth it. When you do that, that's when you really benefited from the Dharma. We hear about people gaining awakening while listening to the Dharma. Well, this is how they did it. Appropriate attention, bringing the Dharma in, applying it to the problem of their suffering, and then working, doing what they can to develop some dispassion for suffering. It sounds strange. We're passionate about our suffering, but we are. We're passionate about our clinging. And if we can learn how to stop clinging, stop that, those repeated addictive behaviors, that's when we've gotten the best use out of the Dharma.